Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the wilderness. And in this class, I want to show you what the wilderness is, and even go as far as to show you where the wilderness is. Talking about this wilderness that we read over in the book of Revelation chapter 12, we see it there twice in verse 6 and in verse 14, where this woman, who we know as the bride, is given two wings of an eagle and is flown into the wilderness where she is fed for a period of time as well as protected from the serpent or the beast as we know it. Now, there's a lot of discussion, a lot of talk on the wilderness and what exactly it is. There's many people that want you to believe that this is some mystical place, maybe even out of this world. But when you look at other translations, like the Common English translation, instead of saying wilderness, it just says desert. It says that the woman fled into the desert where our father has prepared a place for her. When you look at the Strong's number 2048 for wilderness, you see that it means solitary or desolate. And when you look at the uses for the word, it's describing a deserted place or a desolate place, an abandoned wasteland. And when you look at the Merriam-Webster definition of the word wilderness, the first definition says a tract or region uncultivated or uninhabited by human beings, essentially undisturbed by human activity. It says that it is an empty, pathless area or region or part of a garden devoted to wild growth. So the book of Revelation is not telling us that this woman, the bride, will fly off to some place off this planet. What we're being told is that this bride will be taken out into the countryside, out into the places that don't have a lot of human activity or human development. This is the exact same thing that we read about over in the book of Exodus chapter 13, when our father took those people out into the wilderness. They were in a city environment. They were in the heart of the world's economy, which was Egypt at the time. But if you know the story, you know that our father brought them out of there on the wings of an eagle, so to speak. The wings of an eagle was those angels that led them through the Red Sea and into the wilderness where they spent 40 years. Now, this all makes sense when you look at Exodus chapter 13 and verse 17, which says, And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. So what this is telling us is that our father took them the long way around so that they wouldn't see war. It says that if they had a saw war, they would have repented and went back into Egypt. So what war was going on? It obviously wasn't Egypt because Egypt was destroyed. You have to remember that they lost all of their firstborn, which means that every family had somebody to bury, maybe even two. You remember that the Israelites were told to ask for and received all of the wealth out of Egypt. They gave them all of the gold and silver. So Egypt was essentially fleeced by the Israelites. Not to mention all of the plagues that had devastated the area there in Egypt. This would have been hard for them to make war with anybody. But all of this happened before their entire army was destroyed. So they didn't have an army even to fight with at all. But when you look down in Jasher chapter 81 verse 41, it says that even Pharaoh was sent to a whole nother land the land of Nineveh, where he reigned over them for a long time. So Egypt didn't even have leadership. How could they have made war with no leadership, no army, no money, and no food? They couldn't. So what is Exodus chapter 13 and verse 17 talking about? There was some other war that was going on, and our father was leading his people away from those battles. And the way I read it, they never even knew that the world was at war at the time. So the wilderness was a way of protecting his people and leading them away from danger. So let's fast forward to today. 
when we are looking at the battles or the war that's going on over in Ukraine right now. Now, I don't really choose sides in what's going on over there. Frankly, it's not my business. I am the third party who is waiting for them to get out of the way so that I could take my rightful position here on the earth, along with many of you listening to this video. But I do want to show you using a map of the destruction that's going on in Ukraine to show you exactly where the wilderness is. So we're looking over here at a map. It says it's the Russian advance in Ukraine. So we can see the major skirmishes and even the areas of destruction on this map here in red. All of these red areas are the places where the Russian military have came in and destroyed those parts of Ukraine. But notice something interesting. When you look at the population density map of Ukraine and put these two maps together, you see that it is these highly concentrated areas that are being occupied by the Russian army. Kiev, Kherson, Kharkiv, Maripol, these are the areas occupied and now being destroyed by the Russian army. And you see that many of them are in the populous areas. They are in the areas that are heavily developed by civilian activity. But look at the areas that don't have as many people in it. Some of these areas have less than five people per square mile. Well, you see here that these areas are untouched by the Russian army. So you could imagine in these low density areas, there are people who don't even know that the war is going on. Some of these people don't have televisions or radios and are only hearing explosions in the distance, which sounds like thunder. This is what I believe the Bible is referring to when it's saying rumors of wars. Because in these uninhabited areas, you could imagine people showing up and say, hey, we're at war. And other people saying, hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. But yet their country is in one of the most intense battles that we've seen in a long time. Some of these people are in the wilderness, but not all of them because they weren't led out there by our father's hands or by the wings of his eagle. Some of them just live there naturally and have no intention on doing our father's will. Sure, because of where they live, many of these people won't see war, but can they consider themselves protected and safe just because they're in the wilderness? No, there are many other dangers in the wilderness. Like for instance, nuclear power plants, which actually is a huge threat when you understand how these power plants work. It takes so much human activity to keep these systems online and keep those nuclear power plants operating properly. So in the event that something happens to one of these nuclear power plants, the people in these remote areas will also have to worry about the radioactive plume that will be dispersed by the wind. That's why we have to have the wings of the eagle to lead us because there's no way to know which reactor will melt down when and which way the wind will blow when it does. Then there are other threats there too. Chemical facilities, gas and treatment plants, things that if for some reason the humans are not allowed to maintain and take care of will get out of control and will cause disasters that will affect the humans, even the ones that are in the wilderness. So don't think you can just quit your job, pack up your stuff, put up a map and throw a dart at the most unpopulated areas, move your family there and think you're going to be safe because you could actually move to one of these other dangers that are to come up on the world. So let me tell you the true path to the wilderness. And we'll start over here in Matthew chapter 24, which in verse 31, we see again, the wings of the eagle here is talking about angels and how our father plans to gather his people, just like he did back there with Moses and Egypt. This is why Revelation chapter 12 and verse 14 is written this way. 
stressing the fact that he is doing the leading. The people are not choosing to go on their own or where they're going to go, but he is actually directing them. So I'll bring you over to the Septuagint translation of the book of Jeremiah. This is the same chapter that we read about the new covenant. Well, in verse 8 of chapter 31 or chapter 38 in the Septuagint, it says, Behold, I bring them from the north and will gather them from the end of the earth to the feast of Passover. And the people shall be gathered a great multitude and they shall return hither. So just like there with Moses, he gathered them at the feast of Passover and then he led them out into the wilderness. This is the pathway to the wilderness. It goes through the feast of Passover. We see this confirmed over in the book of 2nd Esdras. In chapter 2, verse 38 says, Arise and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. So we already understand that we get our sealing. That what's talked about over in Revelation chapter 7. We get that sealing in the feast of the Lord. But then back over in Jeremiah, we understand that it is the feast of Passover that we are to be gathered back into his protections. And then we see back over in Matthew that this is necessary to protect us from the war we read about, where it says from the four winds. It's referring to the winds of war. So what is the book of Revelation chapter 12 talking about? When it's talking about this woman fleeing into the wilderness, it's talking about our father's people, his bride, and that multitude that no man can number, who after keeping the feast of Passover, will be escorted to some desolate, remote place where they will be nourished with food, water, and clothing as they escape the war and the other calamities that will come upon the world so that once the world has completely destroyed itself. These people that we read about over in Revelation chapter 14 can emerge ready to repopulate the earth. These people will be the new Noahs of the world. Those who have survived on the ark through all of the calamities, chaos, and tribulations of the world only to emerge on the other side unharmed and untouched with the sole mission of repopulating the earth.